welcome back to my channel. So, um, this is my fourth video of 2020, but this is my first video in 2020 where I'm actually sitting here with you guys. Um, I did one video, like a sit down video with Ana Marcela and Risa, so obviously I don't get to talk as much or like do this kind of intro type thing. And I did two vlogs, which again, I don't really like sit down and chat. Let me move back a little, I feel like I'm close. Um, and yeah, that's that's what's happened so far in 2020. We're still in the first week of 2020 though, so it's kind of insane that I'm already on my fourth video. But yeah, that's what's happening. Um, anyway, I am really excited about it being a new year and about being here on YouTube again, another year. This is my, this is gonna be my sec second year on YouTube, which is nuts. Um, but yeah, I also, want to start out this video and I haven't even told you guys what the video is yet but let me start out the video with some product shout outs so this is something new I'm starting in 2020 I'm going to shout out some products um and these may or may not be sponsored I'll tell you that these two particular products are not sponsored products they're just products I like and I want to share with you guys and I thought it would be a fun way to start out my videos maybe not all of them but some of them from now on so the first item is this clear quartz ring you can have a look at that. Um, and my personal, actually a personal friend of mine, um, Nick or Nicholas, um, he makes stuff like this. He makes jewelry, he makes necklaces, I'm sorry, rings, necklaces, um, artwork, all this kind of stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can uh, go like his Instagram. It's at Nicholas Angel Artist. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box below. The other product was sent to me, but it's not sponsored. I am in no way obligated to shout them out or anything, but I really wanted to. So um, you guys obviously probably know about EOS, which I always call EOS, but I know it's actually EOS. Um, but they have, I didn't know about this. Maybe you guys do. Maybe I'm just not in the loop, but they have these tinted lip balms, which I'm obsessed with. So like today I tried to do like a no makeup makeup look. Um, and I actually didn't put anything on my lips today, but this gives like a, it would give a little bit more color, maybe like a more pink than what I have right now, which is nothing, just my lips. Um, but yeah, I, I actually love this because it's hydrating and it gives you that little tint of color, whether you have like a bold eye and you want to tone down your lips or if you're just going for a no makeup makeup look, love this. This one is in the shade Pink Me Up. So I just wanted to shout out these two products before we get started. Also, one little disclaimer, which I know I'm making this intro really, really long, but let me just tell you, I am filming on my phone today, which... Usually I only film vlogs on my phone, but I'm having a lot of storage issues with my laptop right now that I'm trying to sort out, especially before I go back to school on Monday. Um, but yeah, so I'm filming on my phone. I think it's better quality on my phone, which is really showing you guys how messy my hair is. But um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that in case the video looks different. The editing might be a little different as well um, because I'll be editing it on my iPad, which I have right here in front of me. Um, so I can read off some stuff for today's video. But anyway, today's video, I have been off of school since like the first or second week in December, like second week in December, because first week was Nutcracker week. And then second week I had like one final, I think. But then after that I was off. So almost all of December and now like this first week in January, I've been out of school. And um, so I... Um, so I, I'm so sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was trying to say, so I have been watching a lot of stuff, binge watching on Netflix and Disney Plus specifically. I actually have one Hulu show on here also, which is actually the first one I'm gonna talk about. But um, so yeah, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus have been my life savers this break. Um, I literally, you know, we had holidays and also um, I went out of town. But aside from that, I've literally been here at home. So um, I have been watching show after show after show. And apparently I've become like a professional binge watcher because I have a, a gotten to the point where I can finish an entire series in a day or two, which I never used to be able to do. But anyway, what I'm gonna be doing is talking about each show that I've binge watched lately. Um, I think all of these are new. There's one that I'm not certain when it came out. But other than that, all of them are new. And I'm going to, they come out either in December or January. 
So I'm gonna talk about each one. I'm gonna try not to spoil anything. I'm gonna do my best, but I, in case I accidentally do drop a spoiler, spoiler alert, uh, I won't drop any major plot points or anything though. Uh, and I'll rate each show that I watched and I'll tell you guys if I, actually I recommend all of these I think, but I'll tell you guys like what the audience is, what the basic plot is with no spoilers, um, what I rank it and whatnot. So let's just get started. So my one Hulu show is Marvel's Runaways. Now this is not a new show, but the third season came out in December at the very first week, I think, or second week of December. Um, my review is basically, I really did enjoy this season. Uh, I won't give spoilers, like I said, but episodes eight and nine are my favorite in the entire maybe series. I do have like a few episodes I really like from the series, but eight and nine of season three are the best maybe in the series. Uh, episode eight, and this is not a spoiler because it's already been announced everywhere, was a crossover with Cloak and Dagger. And I like Cloak and Dagger, not as much as Runaways, but I did like Cloak and Dagger as well. So uh, it was really cool to see that crossover. There's a new villain this season, again, not a spoiler because it's been announced everywhere, um, but we have Morgan Le Fay and there's a lot more magic aspects. Um, one thing I didn't like about this season, and I'm not spoiling anything, I'm trying my best, is we don't really get closure to some of the past um, issues or villains. So I wish there was a little more closure. Episode 10, I'll say a little disappointing, especially after how good episode eight and nine were. We kind of could have done without episode 10. Um, and another disappointing thing is that the show's not getting a season four. And I don't think they knew this when they were filming. So they kind of set up some stuff throughout the season that obviously now with the show having been canceled, are not is not going to get to be continued so but overall I really did enjoy the season I don't have a favorite season of the show but like I said I think my two favorite episodes of the show are in this season um for those of you who don't really know what Runaways is or aren't familiar with it I should have started with this but Runaways is this show um and basically the parents are the villains in this show and there's a lot of intricate um storylines and you get to kind of meet each family and the parents and the kids and their dynamics but basically the parents are villains and um the kids end up running away and they discover these powers that some of them have some of them don't have powers but the very cool thing about this show and it's something i like about like spider-man and miss marvel and some of the younger uh, marvel heroes is that they're just getting to figure out their powers some of them don't have powers they're just regular kids who have been um kind of tasked with these big roles of like superheroes so uh i if i had to give this show a rating or this season the season um because for some of these i'm only well, all of these i'm only talking about the current seasons um i would give this season an eight and a half out of ten so really good like I said, episode 10, not my fave. And there's a little few things that they set up that I wish we'd be able to continue. Um, so now Fuller House season five, that is another one that I binge watched. Now, most of you are probably familiar with Fuller House um, or even Full House. Full House was the original. They obviously did this spinoff Fuller House that follows the two of the three daughters and the best friend Kimmy. Um, so many years later uh it's a really and then obviously their kids as well um as you guys know last season kimmy gave birth she was the surrogate mom to um stephanie's baby so we get to see kind of that working out stephanie discovering like how she is as a mother and kimmy kind of going through some situations as well there's also of course a big focus on dj because she is like the main character of the show um I've got to say, and I love Fuller House, but most of the season did drag for me a little bit. It, sorry if you can hear my dog barking. It wasn't as entertaining per se as some of the previous seasons. There's some great moments. There's one particular guest appearance, not, not really by like an original cast member, but like by a, um, actor or actress i won't spoil anything so the guest appearance is really interesting they do have a few dance numbers which they've had in the previous seasons and the last episode which i believe they only had 10 so i think the 10th episode in season five which is this is just the first half of the season the second half hasn't come out yet but the 10th episode was for sure a fave of mine um something big happens of course and something um we've been waiting for there's also some appearances um so in general there was great moments um 
and season or episode 10 was a great episode but I felt like some of the plot or it felt almost repetitive and it felt like they were just trying to force it to keep going with that being said I do love this show it's a great family show I think a lot of people love it um it's very like um uh, good for like all age groups you know all audiences so it was very enjoyable either way even it's even the moments where you felt like the show dragged they were able to redeem those moments with a bigger moment so I'm not mad at it um if I had to give this uh season a rating I would give it like a seven and a half maybe eight out of ten I would still recommend it especially or mainly only if you're a fan of the original show um then or if you've been a fan of fuller house since it started or for the last few seasons then i definitely would recommend it however if you're somebody who easily gets bored or really wants a intricate storyline just be aware that this is more comedy and family oriented rather than something super intricate the next one is Spinning Out. So this was actually the first thing on Netflix that I saw in 2020. And of all of these, no, I, I'm, I'm lying. I've seen others in 2020, but um, Spinning Out, wow. Um, it's definitely, and the rating on Netflix is mature audiences. It's definitely for mature audiences. I would say like 16, 17 and older. Um, obviously if you're younger, I don't recommend the show, but if you are older, it's a really great show. So it's about, um, a figure skater and she was a solo figure skater. She suffered through kind of a traumatic injury. Um, and all she ever knew in her life was figure skating because that was like her passion. She also has a sister who figure skates and she suffers this injury and the story kind of starts, I think two years later but I could be off on that number and she's trying to get back into skating and she has like no chance at a solo career so she finds a partner and she's doing pair skating now but it's a totally different thing so she's having to kind of figure that out and then aside from that there's some love stories there's that on again off again friendship with somebody um and her and her mother uh which the girl's name is Kat I believe the main character um, they both are bipolar, so we get to see kind of their struggle with their mental health and the struggle of, you know, um, having to start all over, the struggle of fearing losing your passion, um, all the love triangle issues. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, but I thought it was a really great show, very interesting, kept me wanting to watch it. There were some predictable moments, um, but it was... It was good. I really did enjoy it. Um, I thought it was interesting. It was um, just something different, you know. I've actually, as a dancer, I've seen a lot of dance shows. I've seen a lot of cheerleading shows as a former cheerleader. I've seen a lot of shows about gymnastics because I really enjoy watching gymnastics. Um, and as much as I enjoy watching actual, like, real-life figure skating, I've not seen many shows about figure skating. So it was really interesting to watch. Um, and yeah, I, if I had to give the show a rating, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Definitely recommend it. Again, I if you're over that audience um, age level, like 16, 17 or older, then that's a good age to watch it. There's nothing like graphic or anything, but there's just some heavy topics. Um, next, for a kind of younger audience or any audience, HSMTMTS, and I'm the only person who I think says it like that, even when I'm not typing, but High School Musical, the musical, the series on Disney Plus. Oh my gosh, so episode 10, as of the time I'm filming this, which considering it comes out tomorrow, um, it'll probably be out by the time this is uploaded, but it's not out yet, but I have been obsessed. So I went into this show thinking like, it's not gonna be good, it's a Disney Channel reboot, um, look, I loved Kim Possible as a kid and then Disney Channel made it into a live action movie and I couldn't even watch it because I just couldn't. It was so bad. But I loved High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. I watched them all the days they premiered. It was like a staple of my childhood. You can quiz me on song lyrics. I am the Sharpay of life, okay? So anyway, I went into this thinking they're going to try to make this like into High School Musical 4 or like something that's just not going to be good like a remake or I don't even know what 
and I think a lot of people went in with that expectation and then it's not even like they're not trying to continue high school musical or like remake it actually it's about like the kids who go to east high like the actual or not i think it is called east high the actual actual school like where high school musical was filmed and they are putting on a production of high school musical the musical it's hard to follow i know but um and i absolutely love this show so they have they sing the songs from the original um high school musical they sing new songs and there's some songs i think i kind of you know um just for a moment that i've been obsessed with like almost as good as the original songs so very impressed um there's some good like singing moments some good plot lines it's got like a little bit of the typical like disney channel-esque plot but to a new level um there is representation on all levels so there's lgbtq plus representation there is and which is awesome for disney and there's also um just a wide range of people so body types skin colors uh, nationalities the main character actually has two moms so it's really really inclusive and diverse and um there's a lot of representation um but yeah like i said the music is great it's not trying to be high school musical it's its own thing but you're still getting these like moments of high school musical um honestly i think people of all ages would love this show like maybe not super like adult adults but like young adults like myself who grew up with high school musical younger kids or teenagers like my sister who are familiar with high school musical but didn't grow up with it and even people who didn't grow up or aren't familiar with high school musical at all this show is just so good um yeah, so if I had to rate this one, I would give it, and call me crazy, and uh, look, I'm not gonna lie, there's moments that I'm like, ugh, and I also wish the episodes were longer and they were able to focus more on some characters because they have a huge cast, but 10 out of 10 from me. Go Disney Plus, um, you know how to do a spin-off much better than Disney Channel, so props to you but yes love that show all right next up alexa and katie on netflix so i watched the first season kind of by accident a few years ago i want to say two or three it usually comes out around christmas the new season because netflix makes me wait a whole year for another season which drives me nuts but anyway um this this series is basically about two best friends alexa and katie one of the best friends had has cancer in the first season she gets over that she's no longer has cancer but she's now learning throughout the series to cope with kind of the trauma behind having had cancer um to deal with transitioning from being you know like this girl with cancer to now no longer having it um and stuff like that and then also it's just the dynamic between the two best friends and relationships in school and sats and all that kind of good stuff um for me it's more of like a childish show honestly it's just something that i've continued to watch because i watched the first season i did like kind of the like cancer storyline which sounds horrible but that's i i don't mean it like that like i just mean it's interesting um but um it's a little goofy a little over the top very um disney channel or something even nickelodeon to be honest but um there's good moments there is a really good relationship and kind of a dynamic in um this new season th which is season three by the way um there is some um funny moments relatable moments um so there's some good stuff in it uh overall if i had to give it a rating i would give it about i would give it like a six out of ten so a little bit more than half but it's not like something you must must see however if you're super bored and need something to watch on netflix go ahead if you're younger you might enjoy it even more but like i said there is funny moments even for like young adults and teenagers and it's just a little over the top but if you can get past that it's actually a pretty decent show all right next is i have two more netflix shows and both of them are reality shows so glow up and I, this is the only one i'm not sure if it's new or not i have no idea i just stumbled upon it on netflix and it looked really interesting because the thumbnail picture they gave me was like 
a makeup palette and a brush and I love makeup obvi um which is horrible to say because today I did like a super basic look even though I've been doing over the top looks all week when I haven't been filming but anyway um it's a makeup competition show it is in the UK so they've got accents which is really fun um and they do all these different kinds of challenges and it's really cool so I know a while back Kim Kardashian had this or not she wasn't in it but like she produced it or something a makeup competition show on Lifetime I can't even remember the name of it I did watch it and I like that show but what I like a little bit more about this show is that um, they kind of have harder challenges. So it's not all about like glam makeup. They do glam makeup. They do prosthetics for like movie. They do runway makeup. Cause obviously from TV to runway all and all different things, your makeup has to look different. Um, you can't be too powdery for, um, runway, but for TV, you can be too shiny. So, um, or not runway, but like red carpet. And then also like runway is a little more extravagant, but also you can't really look nuts either, you know? So they have a lot of really cool challenges. I really enjoyed the makeup looks. The makeup artists on that show are insanely talented. So if I had to give this show a rating, I would give it an eight and a half out of 10. Um, yeah, I really did enjoy it. So no complaints there. Um, the only thing is, obviously, if you're not interested in makeup or competition shows, this is not the show for you. Um, there's some, but there's some really great, talented people, and overall, I did enjoy it. Um, there were some moments that had me like angry. I was like, "No, this look is better than this one. What are you doing?" Or like, "This person has like almost lost every time. How are they in the finals?" But um, like I said, overall, good show. Really enjoyed it. Um, and the last show I'm talking about actually came out yesterday, as of the day I'm filming this. Um, so I'm only on episode two, but thus far I am obsessed. So this show is called Simply It's Super Easy Cheer. Now, I may or may not have ever mentioned this on my channel. I feel like I haven't, but I was a cheerleader in high school and in middle school. Um, I just did um, like school cheer. I never did all-star cheer, but I was cheer captain. I like... And then I actually was an assistant coach one year after I graduated. So I literally was like cheerleader times 100. You know, the glitter, the bows, the uniforms, the tumbling, the stunts, the cheers, the dances, everything. And I have watched several cheerleading shows in the past. Um, reality ones too, not just like Bring It On and stuff, uh, which is a movie, but you know what I mean. Um, but this one is so real. So this is a show that follows the Navarro um, cheerleaders in, oh gosh, I don't even know what city. I'm not even going to try to guess. But in Texas, which is awesome because I'm from Texas and everybody loves cheer here in Texas. So uh, yeah, it's a college. It's They're getting ready for Daytona, which is the NCAA National College Championships. They really follow each cheerleader in a really cool way um the episodes are very long so you do get a lot and it's just very real like it's the it's one of the most real cheer shows i've ever seen um just the way they depict cheerleading and show it as a sport it's not so easy and it's not all bows and glitters and uniforms it's hard work and i really love that about that show so i would give it thus far so up until episode two if it goes downhill from episode two i'm sorry but thus far i would give it a nine out of ten nine and a half out of ten because that's how much i love this show however again if you don't like reality shows if you don't like cheerleading um then i'll be this is not the show for you but I really, really do love it. So those are my binge reviews. I don't even know what to call this video. We'll figure out a title later. But these are my December, January binge reviews. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And I'll make sure to do it again for maybe like February, March, April, May, June, July. You get the point. Um, because I do really binge a lot of shows. Um, and the reason for that is that I, one, have a pop culture podcast, which I actually have to go record in a little bit because it's Thursday today. Um, and two because I don't really watch actual like regular TV. I watch everything from, I was gonna pick up my phone until I realized I'm filming on my phone. This is just the case. By the way, this is the pop socket I got for Christmas um, with my initials, cause I said I was gonna show you guys that in one of my previous videos. But anyway, um, yeah, I watched almost everything on my phone. So it's, 
very um, usual that you'll find me binge watching something on Netflix, Hulu, or Disney Plus. So I can do this video more if you like it. Anyway, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. I just said that, but I'm saying it again. Um, comment down below what show you have been binging this month. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.